say Jehovah Witnesses stole my kids' birthday presents. Now, in my household, I'm married to a card-carrying Jehovah Witness, and I myself is uh, secular. I'm not religious or a Jehovah Witness whatsoever. So the family dynamics is a bit kind of off in our household. Uh, I have to straddle two cultures in a way. And uh, my kids, they're, they are being indoctrinated into the Jehovah Witness mindset. I wouldn't say I'm letting it happen, but I'm counting, counteracting that effect by just being there and supplying another point of view of whatever situation that the Jehovah Witnesses kind of brings upon my kids. So in this case, it's birthdays. Uh, like I said, my kids are indoctrinated into thinking what, you know, the birthdays are a, a bad idea. It's uh, offensive to God or it makes God sad, you know, that kind of talk with the kids. And it's just a bad thing to happen is, you know, for, to have a birthday, even though in my background and my culture, birthdays is a joyful occasion. This is a commemor commemoration of the day that my children were brought into this world and for me to, you know, be around them. That's one of, my, one of the happiest days of my life. And I have quite a few happy days in my life. But that's been, you know, one of the pinnacle days that, that, that I cherish till, you know, the, till the end of, of my life. I don't go overboard with the birthdays. Uh, if I remember, I will get a card. But I would definitely get them a gift and, with the, with, and make a point about, you know, I'm I'm getting you this gift because um, I am so glad that you are in my life, you know, being your birthday. It, it's to the point now that even though they know it's kind of wrong, according to the Jehovah Witnesses uh, about birthdays, they will still come up to me in confidence and make a request of what gift they would like to receive. And I listen, I take their, you know, suggestion and... and uh, consider it. So, with with that in mind, my wife she really doesn't get upset. Uh, she really doesn't bring up the the matter. So it, it just happens, and, and you know that's that. You know they get my gift, I give them a big old hug, and I you know when we're alone with them, mind you, I'm I'm sort of outgunned out here. Uh, there's too many of them uh, working against me in a way where the grandparents will get access to them and start talking about, you know, the bad things that happen on birthdays and how Jehovah is sad when, when you know, when that happens and Jehovah doesn't like it. And then their mom, my wife, of course, she's telling them, you know, things about that too. The same, the same storyline. Jehovah Witnesses are so predictable about their explanations of things. And I know it. I know exactly probably what they told the kids. So I myself will go to the Bible and read up on stories that sort of brings birthday into a bad light. Uh, the usual talking points. And like I said, Jehovah Witnesses are so predictable in that sense where they'll bring up the same old passages or stories from the Bible that... Uh, makes birthdays be in, in this bad light or something horrible or pagan or something to that effect even though the bible doesn't say that it's pagan or it really doesn't say anything contrary to having birthdays so this is what i tell my children exactly like this i tell them you know so and so this is your birthday i am so glad that you're in my life this is the happiest day in my life and i hope to see more days like this in the future with you something to that effect it changes every year but it's the same theme it's a joyful occasion uh, of you having a, your birthday because it reminds me of one of the happiest days of my life and hopefully yours too which at this point each birthday really is 
pretty joyful because I shower them with gifts. Not I don't go overboard because uh, I'm really against the over commercialization of birthdays and you know holidays and things of that nature. But as a you know a human aspect of it, the the deeper sort of feeling of joy towards my kids. That's that's where I'm coming from. So I'll tell them that I, I concentrate on that particular theme of it is 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 a joyful occasion and uh you know ice cream you know we go out to dinner and and all the the trappings of of a joyful day as a birthday then i i bring up the watchtower's uh argument against birthdays and tell them that that the two stories that they mostly they they, they focus on First is uh, Pharaoh's birthday and hanging of his chief baker back in, I think it's Genesis, um, I don't remember. Yeah, Genesis chapter 40 tells the whole story of that particular occasion. The death of the baker there from Pharaoh, Pharaoh's chief baker, is just coincidence. If anything, it's a story of the prophecy and, and dream interpretation abilities of Joseph. Because he... If, if anything, I, I would think that the only thing wrong with that story or what should be outlawed is, you know, is being around birthdays of kings and, and leaders, you know, just avoid those birthdays. If you get invited, just don't show up. Even that, well, that may get you killed if you don't show up, if you're invited by the king back in those days, but you get my gist. Uh, that whole story was just a coincidence that the the hanging of the chief baker happened three days later after the interpretation of uh, Joseph and, and the baker's dream. And it was another dream, another butler, three days later, interpreting his dream that he would be exonerated from his, you know, offending Pharaoh, and he got off scot-free and was returned to his post, his job. Where the baker, I guess, you know, they don't really explain how he pissed off Pharaoh, but it was bad enough to where he got killed three days later. And that was the interpretation that Joseph gave to those two men about their dreams. It just happens to be on a birthday. That's it. Uh, I think I was read into it just to push their agenda of... Uh, outlawing birthdays uh, if anything I think Joseph Rutherford uh, had a thing against birthdays and he just conjured up that excuse to you know lead his people to think that that's a pagan thing so that's the first explanation I give the kids and, and one of them she she's she's on board with that she's like yeah that's kind of dumb so I was glad to hear that from her but so we moved on to the next occasion of birthdays. And that was the beheading of John the Baptist. Another story that Jehovah Witness likes to use in favor for their outlawing of birthdays to their flock is the death of John the Baptist. So in, in both cases, when I, bo when I read the case of Pharaoh's baker, Chief Baker being hanged, and also John the Baptist's death, the Jehovah Witnesses like to focus that, coincidentally, it happened on the birthday, you know, uh, again, a king's birthday. So, I get two messages after reading that particular, you know, story, both stories. One, do not go to king's birthday parties because it might end up pretty bad. So, if anything, you know, don't do that, but you could go to your buddy's birthday. I don't think anything bad will happen there. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track here. I told my kids about the death of John the Baptist, and I didn't get into details. I mean, they're little kids, so I'm not going to go into that sort of morbid detail of beheadings. But the story goes like this. Uh, the, the king of Israel had a birthday party, Herod or Herodotus, one of those two. King Herod had a birthday party, and this one lady in the crowd danced really, really good and impressed 
the king. So the king was uh, smitten by this person and made a promise to her or, or, you know, some sort of charge like whatever you want in my kingdom, if it's in my, you know, uh, power, I shall give it to you or to thee. I should give you whatever you want, make what whatever wish you, you, you want. So this dancer, uh, this damsel, she goes to her mother and asks her mother, what should I ask of the king? He gave me one sort of, you know, wish that I can have within his kingdom. And the mother told him, told the lady, ask King Herod, uh, the head of John the Baptist on the platter. So basically that's the paraphrase of what happened there. So the dancer went back to uh, Herod and asked him, asked him for the, the severed head of John the Baptist on a plate. And the king was very upset of this. And, and the, you know, read it for yourself. Mark, uh, I think, is 14, chapter 1 to 12. Gives the account of the whole story there. And the king, which he was in favor of John the Baptist, and he knows that the, the general public, the, the Israel Israelites, uh, loved John the Baptist as a righteous man and so forth that you know that this was a hideous request but to save face to to uphold his oath because he gave his oath his word that he would give this dancing lady uh, whatever she wanted had to you know uh, honor that request and despite how wrong it is and everything he granted the the death of John the Pap Baptist. So I gave my kids the same point that I'm going to sort of emphasize in this video, and that is, you know, true. There was a coincidence that happened on a birthday, and both involving kings. The first story was, uh, I don't think it was related into something, you know, dreadful about birthdays. It was just a uh, a coming true of a prophecy that Joseph has indicated about the dreams of the two captives. But then in this particular story, I told my kids, and this is my tr true feelings about this particular story and the message or the lesson out of this particular story and context is more a as a, as a warning as not to make promises that you re will regret to keep. Do not make promises that you cannot keep and do not make promises that you will regret having to fulfill uh, if it's against your word or to keep your word. Do not make any promises that you will not like to make. And that's the lesson that I told my kids on what that particular story emphasized. I think it emphasized more of that moral lesson than going to a birthday and having, you know, a prison, uh, having a king order the death of, of one of his subjects, uh, John the Baptist in this case. So that was the, the main point or the main focus of the moral lesson of that particular story that I told my kids. And it had nothing to do with birthdays. That was just coincidentally, you know, uh, the subject matter or the the, the setting of all this it could be you know don't feign over damsels that could dance really nice you know it could it could be it could be a story about that but mostly i think it's don't make any promises you can't keep that's the lesson i got from that story just by critically reading that story and, and delving into the subject matter which i think it was that personal opinion personal interpretation of that particular story do I get birthdays are bad out of that story? No, I don't. So what is the point of this particular video from my worldly perspective? You know the rules that the Watchtower Jehovah Witnesses employ to their people. They are predictable. You know what they're going to say about a certain subject because they drum it into their congregants uh, without end. And it's repetitious. Repetitious is second nature to them. 
birthdays come up, you get those two stories in the Bible to justify not celebrating birthdays. And then some other secular uh, history from historians that say birthdays possibly, more than likely, came from p pagan roots. M most of the things that we do today as a society in, in modern times come from pagan roots from one form or the other. Weddings, uh, piñatas, wedding rings, and so forth. But what I've done in this case here that, that I think is helpful and justifies to my kids that, you know, there is a second way of looking at things is you take their cons about a certain subject, birthdays in this case, and make it, turn it around on its head and make it a positive thing with a positive message behind the story, such as a lesson on not making promises you're not willing to keep in case of Herod the King killing John the Baptist. As far as the baker being killed by Pharaoh on his birthday, it was prophesied by Joseph, and it just so happened to be on the birthday of, of Pharaoh, coincidental. And that was not the main focal point of the story. It just happened to coincidence. But I got to my kids to think about the situation, and I mentioned that there's no other things that says you not to have birthdays or birthdays are bad in the Bible. The, the next closest thing is the, the, the parties that Job has given his kids, their, his kids, on their day. The Bible just says on their day. That could be interpreted in so many other ways. It could be their birthday. In this case, in that particular story, Job's story is, you know, his kids met their death on their day on that get-together, family reunion. I mean, in that case, we could interpret it, interpret their day as a family day or having a get-together with the family. Shall outlaw them all. But, in fairness, the Jehovah Witnesses the, doesn't really focus on that particular story. It's just the first two stories that I've long-windedly have explained in detail. And my rebuttal to the, those stories that I told my kids to let them be, think about another outcome of, of the lessons learned from those particular stories as well. So, at this point, it's working. They feel okay about it. They don't feel guilty. I don't make them feel guilty. And they're enjoying their birthday gifts. So, that's the story from my point of view. As far as the stolen birthday gifts, there's another family member uh, that woke up. And I won't, you know, get into details on this because I want to respect their privacy. But they sent the birthday gift to my kids too but what they do is they send it to me they send that package addressed to me either Amazon or Federal Express or something like that so I get the package I open it up and then I hand take it over to my kids and give it to them so last year it worked like a charm uh, it was addressed to me and uh, but I think my wife and her, the mother-in-law my mother-in-law uh, already conspired to take the gifts last year. Inter they would intercept the packages and, and uh, just hide them or something. Well, they didn't get it last year, but this year I was working away from home and the birthday packages was addressed to me and my wife got to it first. And I know this because in our closet I found the toys and I didn't find any cards or personalized card or anything, but I found the toys and I knew what toys that my kids were going to get for their birthday hidden in a box on top of the closet. And I found the, the uh, uh, Federal Express box uh, put in the garbage, just an open box. So my wife has intercepted my kids' birthday presents and didn't give it to them and didn't leave, you know, the card for them to read or anything that my other relative has sent my kids. So indirectly or directly, I'm not sure, I'm not thinking about it. Uh, my wife has committed thievery and a federal uh, offense by stealing mail addressed to me. I mean, if you really want to be literal about it, she stole mail from me. But I don't think of it as that. Uh, 
yes, it's a crime, I guess. Stealing is, you know, thou shalt not steal, one of them. She has broken that rule, supposedly, to counteract the birthday present thing of my kids. To this day, and I'm talking like maybe a month and a half later, uh, my wife still hasn't given my kid the, that particular gift. I mean, she could always say that she got them or, you know, somebody brought her that, but not on that particular day, not a birthday present, but just present. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet, and so I'm wondering when that point will be. I mean, is she going to throw that? She didn't throw the thing away, so I, I, I would guess she's not going to. She might present it later on when, you know, the birthday uh, thing has subsided some. And, you know, uh, I'm not even mad. If anything, this I take note of what happened and how far my wife is capable of doing things. And I, like I said, I keep a mental note of that, and I was upset, but for a brief second, and then I just put it aside. Note taken. It was expected, actually. I expected her to do something like this. Uh, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a surprise. It just, you know, we weren't smart this year. I, I would have had my family member actually send the package over to where my work location is, and then. I could deliver the package that way. And that's what we're going to do next year. But uh, this was just, you know, confirmation of, of what my wife is capable of doing under the, you know, the control of the Jehovah Witness organization. Because they're, they are the ones that are driving this particular uh, behavior. Theocratic warfare in the family level, I would say. But you know, I'm not going to do anything. I think I've done the positive things like explain to my kids, you know, the stories in the Bible about what birthdays, you know, mentioned there and what the context of the stories are really are instead of like this focusing on birthdays being bad. I mean, it's actually inconsequential. It's actually really not related to, you know, the story of birthdays itself, as I mentioned before. So I got that point across to my kids just fine, and they were accepting of that. They were like, okay, that, sound, that sounds logical. They, they're critically thinking about this, and I'm developing that thinking ability things with them by, by engaging in this particular, what would have been a, a score or, or a victory from the watchtower and turned it around and use it as a teaching moment to my kids on what the story really is. This theft of their birthday present, they're not even going to know about it. That's just between my mental note taking of what just happened and, you know, I'm not going to bring up the subject because that birthdays are a decisive, divisive issue that they bring upon their their people to, you know, basically try to monopolize, you know, the subject with birthdays where birthdays really is no big deal. I'm not even going to think about it. It's, it's, it's water under the bridge. It's not important. I'm not going to fight about it. It's not worth fighting over, over birthdays or this particular stunt that my wife did. Subjects like birthdays, uh, the blood issue, uh, not celebrating holidays, uh, was Jesus crucified on a stake or a cross, uh, did Jesus spiritually resurrect himself or physically resurrect himself, those are, in my, in my opinion, subjects you should avoid like the plague, just don't even go there. Go somewhere else. Hit them from another location. In this case, the birthday issue in, in, in my situation here sort of brought its ugly head up. And I would imagine that the, the Watchtower Society would, would be expecting a fight from their secular, worldly spouse. Uh, it's something to fight over. If you realize that, you would, you would 
stop uh, stop them in their tracks and just hit them from another direction something of more importance like perhaps the salvation of your kids and your family members from damnation in their case annihilation that subject there is more important than birthdays in my opinion it's also a subject that the birthdays and the other cases of you know the blood and you know steak or or whatever those are subjects that they're highly versed in repeatedly they know that particular subject like the back of their hand because that's all they focus on like i've said before you could pre everything that they do is somewhat predictable if you study their habits and what they teach and what they focus on and it's always the same thing uh and those subjects is just a, a cat and fodder or a red flag to debase the real debate that needs to be talked about so i don't even go there okay yeah you stole birthday presents from from the mail from your own kids big deal i got bigger issues to talk about in this situation i think it, you know whether it worked or not i think it has because we're, we're still in talking terms i didn't blow up like the watchtower society would would have me you know do or uh expect the stereotype they, they believe in their own stereotype of what worldly people think about things like this yes it's strange and in, in, from our perspective but it's really not an issue i mean deep down it's, it's nothing compared to the big picture of it all so we pretty much i pretty much from from my perspective in this situation i declawed that that weapon that they use to divide families apart uh from you know worldly uh spouse and their jehovah witness spouse i'm not even going to go there in this case I, I like to think that i'm playing chess and the watchtower society is playing checkers and i read their rule book i read their playbook so i know what their next move is going to be playing check playing checkers while i make moves that resemble more chess in my opinion so uh, i've explained what i kind of like you know have a teaching moment with my kids about this particular subject and uh it's taken a f and it's taken hold pretty pretty well and they respect me in that regard as to you know a, a teacher you know they're um teaching them something other than what the watchtower is is is, is explaining i'm giving them another perspective and i'm talking to my kids i'm being involved in their spirituality even though i myself is secular and agnostic like i read the rule book i'm reading the bible i know exactly where they're coming from i know what the stories mean and when in rome be like the romans and that's sort of like what i'm doing when in jw land i'm acting speaking and explaining things like a JW, but with critical thinking behind it. Use their rules and their dogma against them and bring out another perspective on, on whatever subject that they might throw at you, in this case, birthdays. So from my point of view, I think this was a victory overall in my favor towards my kids. It, it's not even my favor, it's my kids' favor. They won in this case, because I'm fighting for them. As far as my wife, I'm not going that, that route. I'm not going to bring up that subject. I'm going to bring up more hardcore uh, issues with her that are deeper than birthdays. And overall, my overall strategy is, is salvation, according to the gospel. That is my focus. And it all evolves around Jesus. And I'm saying this as a secular person, as an as a agnostic. But I have to speak her language and use her rules and the Bible to explain these things to her, to make her understand. As far as uh, birthdays, if that ever comes up, I'm going to just ask her a question. And this is coming from her, uh, from their, the Watchtower's publications. And props and, and a shout out to uh, King of Faders, because he uses the publications to counteract or, or show the hypocrisy of the society with their own material. So from taking taking a lesson from King of Faders here, this is uh, Awake 2003. Uh, I don't know which month, but it's on page 22 and 24. 
And the story is the piñata, an ancient tradition. So I'm going to take a line here out of their explanation about piñatas. They, at first, I guess they said it was uh, pagan and it comes from Italy. A form of it comes from Italy, so that's, you know, Roman. So it's pagan in, 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 in history. So out of their publication, like I said, out of Awake 2003, page 30 or 31, uh, I would say it's the 24th or the 25th paragraph. It says here, A main concern is not what the practice meant hundreds of years ago, but how it's viewed today in your area. Understandably, opinions may vary from place to place. And then they give other explanation about this whole thing. But basically, it's not what this particular practice or tradition, uh, granted it not being harmful to humans or, or, you know, against the law, meant a hundred years ago, but what it means today. So birthdays thousands of years ago may, you know, involve some pagans activities, but what does it mean today? If the people around them, like an average American, if you say, you know, today's your birthday, what does that mean to you? Is it pagan? They're just going to look at you all weird and say, no, what are you, crazy? Everyone has forgotten what that particular, you know, celebration or, or tradition or festivities means. And it's not, it doesn't mean anything today what it meant 200, 400, 2000 years ago. That is the gist of what I'm reading here on their own publication. Another sentence out of the same article. We found that for many people in Mexico, the piñata has lost its religious significance and is considered by most to be just harmless fun. That's an explanation of birthdays and holidays and things of that nature. People have forgotten what they mean and it's lost its religious significance or if there were any religious significant and it's just considered harmless fun in present times. Thanksgiving, the American Thanksgiving, that's coming up here pretty soon. That's not pagan. I mean, it's fairly a new sort of holiday. It's not owing allegiance to a government or anything like that. It's just getting together and giving thanks to the well-being of all beings, uh, pretty much. Anyway, so that's my sort of rebuttal or argument to my wife if we ever have this particular discussion. And I got three other uh, paragraphs and articles from the Watchtower and Awake Magazine, and they're on jwfacts.com where I got them from. They helped me a great deal. So one final note about birthdays and uh, a couple of passages about, you know, the cons against, supposedly JW cons against birthdays. I'll bring this one up here. John chapter 16, verse 21. I'll read it from the New International Version, NIV. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into this world. And you're reminded of that child being born into this world on a yearly basis on that particular day, year after year. I say that's pretty positive from the Bible itself.